we're getting ready to wash our doll. These are the four basic elements you need or may potentially need to wash the body of your doll. First we have the OxyClean. In this case it's a no-name brand. Uh, this would be used if you need to soak the doll due to major staining or a lot of dirt. But if you wanted to soak it for a few hours in OxyClean, that would tend to, tend to get a lot of the major stains out of the doll, especially just in-ground dirt. Then we have your regular everyday laundry detergent. This is what you're going to hand wash the dolls in. Again, basic wash. Uh, it's also good. The reason I have wool light specifically is because you can also soak the doll's hair in the wool light and it helps to tighten up the yarn so it's not quite so fuzzy, brings back a lot of the luster, especially on the, on the uh, lemon blondes. Then we have the sunlight soap. This is a bar of sunlight soap, not to be confused with the dish soap. This is great for stains, especially the ingrained dirt you'll find on their hands and their feet. That is fantastic for getting out any major stains. Finally, we have hairspray, which I know sounds a little bit weird, but this is amazing for getting out magic marker, uh, Sharpie, that kind of thing. Fantastic for getting it out. Doesn't necessarily work perfectly every time, but it's really good at getting the majority of it out. Between these four products, you can get out the majority of stains. Having said that, everyone has their preferred stain remover, um, and if you have something that works for you, go for it. However, I would recommend that you test it on a doll that uh, you don't find as valuable first, just to make sure it doesn't have any long-term consequences for the fabric on the doll. Okay, so it's bath time. This is my bathtub. I have a couple of kids here who need a very basic bath. They don't really have too many stains, nothing, no big deal. But they do need to have a bit of a bath and a face wash. So we're just going to go through that process. Uh, I have this young lady here. Now I, I have put in Wool Light Laundry Detergent um, and basically lukewarm water. Not even warm, but just enough that my hands aren't uncomfortable. Her hair is not really that dirty and it's already been defuzzed and it's in pretty good shape. So I'm not actually going to get her head wet. So I'm going to just stick her in there and just agitate her like I would if I was the, lawn, the, the washing machine. So I'm rubbing at her hands and her feet. Rubbing tends to be all you need to do. Just give it a rub, give it a scrub. You'd be amazed what comes out of these kids. Gotta wonder if they've ever been cleaned sometimes. Other times, very little comes out. Now, if the kids aren't that dirty, I find I can reuse the water for more than one kid. Um, which is always nice. So sometimes they don't need a whole lot. I'm going to just pull her out and check and see if she needs any work on her hands here. Well, it looked to have come out pretty good. Any hair on her body? No? Okay. So this was just more of a surface grime. All right. I'm going to give her a squeeze. Alright, step two. Now you know why I put the bucket in there. Again, lukewarm water. We're just going to rinse her out. Just a matter of getting much of the soapy water out as possible. And again, if her hair gets wet, it's not a big deal. It just doesn't need to. Um, when it comes to the hair, fuzz is generally caused by the agitation from being washed. So a lot of the fuzz, depending, depending on the yarn, has actually been caused by it going through the washing machine or some other agitation process. So, if it doesn't need to get washed, no point in it. Alright. Now, once the water basically runs clear, 
And it tends to go pretty quickly. They, uh, they don't hold it very much. Now keep in mind, sometimes the, the what looks like suds is actually just water um, coming out with air. All right. Now I don't need to squeeze her out that much because the next step involves the washing machine. Okay, here's another kid. Also not exceptionally dirty, but I want to but he's obviously been played with and his hands are and feet are a little bit darker than they maybe should be. So, in he goes. Now in his case, he's a bald kid. So I'm also going to want to wipe his head off. And I think I'm just going to use my hands for this and see what I can get off. It's okay to get water inside the head. Um, if you have a kid with hair, you can hang them upside down. The water will drip out the hair. Um, some kids occasionally have a hole in the plug that allows water to get in from the body side of things um, but uh, it will eventually drain out so don't either through the body or through the hair so don't worry too much about that and they will also come out it will also tend to come out uh, when you dr put them in the washing machine to spin them dry which I'm going to show you in a little while so let's just pull him out and see how he's doing see some marks on his cheeks much better anything else on his head ah oh, there's a white mark these white marks are really insidious they tend to get on kids I think it's from bumping up against things magic eraser is great for them Tends to take them right off. There we go. Good thing. Oh, there's a couple other ones. Okay. Now, I'm going to use the sunlight soap on his hands. Just give them a bit of a... I try to just kind of rub so if you scratch with your nails here, especially with or where the threads are, um, you're likely to break the threads and you don't want to do that. So generally if you just squeeze and squeeze and rub, squeeze and rub, things tend to come out pretty well. Ah, much better. Okay. Let's do his other hand. This same procedure will work anywhere on their body to get out a lot of stains. They really are vers really are resilient. They a lot will come out of these kids. All right, let's just check his feet. Now you'll sometimes find in kids that have been washed before, they have sort of a dark stain along the bottom or along the seams. That's from where they've been washed before and hung up to dry, and the dirty water has actually dripped out the bottom of the seam. It's not permanent, it's just a bit unsightly. You can get it out, and I'm going to show you a way to stop it from happening in the future. There we go. Better. Let's try. Let's try this foot. Now, while you're working, if you do happen to blow a stitch or notice a body seam that's unsewed, that's okay. You can fix it later. It's not a big deal. I do recommend you put things back in before you give them a bath, but it's not the end of the world if something comes out during the bath. You can always put it back in again later. I 
Okay. Always a good idea to double check and make sure any dark spots haven't shown up from the dirt coming out. I'm actually kind of concerned about this arm, so we're gonna... Now in this particular case, I'm using the same water I used on the first doll. Um, it's generally okay to do two or three dolls in the same water, unless they're really, really, really filthy. In which case, you've probably soaked them ahead of time anyway. Okay. So. Now, since I'm done with this water, I'm going to dump it. And then we'll get him rinsed. plumbing. Just letting him rinse out here. Grab off his face. ready for step two. All right, this young lady has lemon blonde hair and it's a little bit dingy just, you know, from over time. So what I'm going to do, it's also very the frizzy kind of yarn. So what I'm going to do is I have mixed up some water with woolite laundry detergent and I'm basically just going to put her into the water. Now, she doesn't need a bath. Now, if she does get wet, it's not a big deal because it's not going to hurt her. But basically, I'm just going to sit her upside down in the bath and let it go. Now, um, I'm actually going to move her um, to another spot, but I'm basically just going to hang her by her feet uh, and let her head soak in the water. So, I've taken this young lady out of the woolite bath. I just basically need to rinse her off now. Get all of the soap that was in the water whoop, out of her hair and her body where it might have soaked in. She was in there for about an hour. You'll find out what works for you. Got the cold water on. Now. She is going to go into the washing machine with her siblings to get spun out. Here we go. Okay, so we have the kids washed. The next step is to dry them. Um, if you have a top load washing machine, such as this one, uh, what you can do is put them into a pillowcase stick them in a pillowcase and then put them into the washing machine so you can do upwards of five or six kids in one load um, they do not have to be fully squeezed out but uh, I get some of the excess water before I put them in bottom of the pillowcase now make sure you put them sort of in a even layout in the washing machine so that it doesn't um, get uneven and your load gets distributed correctly. Everybody in the washing machine. Okay, now you're going to set it to the spin cycle. Almost every washing machine has one. You're not going to get them wet. You're simply 
going to spin them dry. This will actually spin any water out of the head as well. Um, so it's a great thing to do uh, anytime they get wet at all. Even if you just get the arm wet, so you just have to clean an arm because it's got a stain on it, spin it dry because it means none of that dirty water crap is going to stain the, um, the seam. So here we go. Okay, so the spin cycle is finished. Now the kids actually have to dry off. So out comes the pillowcase and out comes the kid. There she is, all done. So kid goes up here, pillowcase goes down here. Now, if you don't have a clothes rack to dry them on, anywhere where there's a lot of space and air that can go around them, some people hang them off a clothesline, some people hang them over things, but there's not enough water left in, to, in them to cause any kind of problem. So as long as the air can circulate, they're going to dry out pretty quickly. I find even inside the house, shouldn't take more than overnight to get them basically dry. Some of them might take a little bit longer than that, but for the most part, overnight should be fine. There we go. She can go up there. Now, I do keep some old pillowcases just for this, although occasionally I have to use my regular pillowcases as well. Okay. So everybody's getting ready to dry. Now, before I leave them, I am going to do one more thing and just give them their first final treatment. I typically have to do more than one, so I'm going to get it started. Just a simple rubbing in of the vinyl restore into all the crevices. You'll find the first couple soak in really quickly. All right, so everybody's done and ready to dry and they'll be all ready to be dressed tomorrow, clean and ready to have the hair done. Here we have the items that I use to clean the head of a Cabbage Patch Kid. Um, each head is slightly different. Uh, the final has a the vinyl has a different reaction to different cleaners, and of course, it depends on how dirty they are. In general, to just get off the first layer of dirt, toothbrush, sunlight soap, doo -doo -doo, over the face, that gets off the first layer. Whatever doesn't come off with the first layer gets a magic eraser treatment. Uh, make sure you don't get the kitchen one with the abrasive stuff on it. You just want the regular old magic eraser. This tends to get off the more stubborn stains, uh, pens, some markers, in-ground dirt, that kind of thing. Give it a good scrub with a magic eraser. That'll tend to get quite a bit of stuff off. Things that are left, if they're marker, pen, um, any kind of uh, stain, so uh, a, say a green stain from the box, you're going to maybe want to do a zit cream treatment on them. There is a separate video on how to do a zit cream treatment on your dolls. This will also work on shoes because they're also vinyl as well. So do take a look at that for some of the more stubborn stains. And finally, when everything is cleaned off and the head is finished, I also like to give it a few uh, treatments with the uh, vinyl restorer. Brings back the color, often brings back the um, color in the cheeks, and in some cases just helps even out the complexion. This is especially great for AA kids. You'd be amazed at the difference in the quality of the vinyl after a couple of treatments with the Vinyl Restorer. So a great investment. And as a bonus, you can use it to clean your car. Clean. What she does need is her face cleaned off and her hair needs a bit of a, uh, a wool light treatment. So that was what we're gonna do for her this, today. So basically I'm gonna start off, I've got her, I've got my bar of sunlight soap. I'm just going to get it wet. Give it a brush around. Now I'm okay with getting your hair wet. 
because I know I'm going to get that wet anyway. If I didn't want to get her hair wet, I might be a little bit more uh, careful with that. But I'm just going to start by giving her a brush. Now, make sure to really wash in the eyes there. All right. Now, give her a rinse off and see how she goes. Oh, I think we might be doing pretty well. There's a little mark in here. Sometimes a little bit of nail work will help out. But she looks pretty good. I'm impressed. That's... Oh, now there's one little mark. I'm going to use the magic eraser and see if I can get that off. Yep. Yep, there it goes. Let's see about this one. Now that's a little bit of staining. May have to use a zip treatment on that. Now, don't forget the backs of the neck. Sometimes they need a little bit of a wash there too. Alright, so her face is clean.